I believe we need to overhaul the parole board. The decision should go from a majority vote to a unanimous vote. We should care about victim impact. When you're releasing cop killers and murderers and rapists, let victims and victims' families be able to weigh in with their testimony and have it be considered. I believe that it is a duty of the governor of the state of New York, not just constitutional authority, but a constitutional duty of the governor of the state of New York to remove a district attorney who refuses to enforce the law. The Manhattan DA is refusing to enforce the law, and he should be removed. And that's something that is priority number one at the top of the list right after we're sworn into office come January 1st. People across the state are concerned about economy, about freedom, about the quality of our kids' education. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican. Independents, Democrats too, people from all walks of life, from all counties and all regions of this state, all believe in many respects that our state's heading in the wrong direction. I mean, the, the people who feel like our state is in the wrong direction far outnumber the people who say that everything is good and on the right track. But we have to make sure that New York voters realize it's not just a right that we're given to vote, it's a duty to vote. It's an obligation to vote. So while this is a unity tour, uh, and Sunday we'll be with Rob Astorino, and since the primary is over, uh, we have all put out statements of support for this unified ticket to make sure that we're successful in November. We are looking forward towards November, and we're looking forward towards January. The solutions to what's plaguing the state are obvious. But unfortunately, with Kathy Hochul, one-party Democrat rule, they're taking us in the wrong direction in so many different respects. Now, as far as last night, first, uh, my heart goes out to the families of two Rochester police officers who were shot yesterday. When Alice and I went to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office last night, right after the, in, uh, the attack that happened at our rally, uh, they had a call come over uh, their speakers for two Rochester PD officers who were shot. One of them died. And that is top of mind for us above all else. But let me speak to what happened at our rally last night. And I felt strongly about this for years because I, I remember exactly where I was, who I was talking to, what time it was when I was notified that Steve Scalise was shot on the congressional baseball field. Uh, I remember watching the video for the first time of Maxine Waters, who I serve with on the House Financial Services Committee. She's the chairwoman of that committee. And she called on people to confront administration officials and allies at restaurants and movie theaters. I don't care whether you are a Republican, Democrat, or Independent, left, right, center, however you identify, whoever you support. There is no room for any type of violence in our electoral process. We can debate. We can disagree. It's actually a cherished, protected, American right, but we should be able to do a rally without having to spend so much extra time now, by the way, focused on enhanced security, which started with our first event this morning. But while I was giving remarks, somebody came up on stage. I'm sure uh, you all had seen the video. Uh, one, I saw the, the weapon that he had in his hand. His fingers were through two of the holes. It was similar to brass knuckles. There were two daggers on the end of uh, this weapon, and he lunged towards my neck area. He was telling me, you're done. He repeated that multiple times. I uh, grabbed his wrist. This came up at our first debate. You were there, but... It's kind of there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're off camera. It was like the Jetsons. My TV screen was there. <laughs> At, the, at that debate, we were asked, you know, tell us something unique that people may not know about you. And I thought about it for a second. I ended up sharing that I was once a black belt. And I won the world championships in sparring. I actually didn't make that up. That's true. Other people on stage were like, oh, that was a good answer. I should have said that. No, I actually had that. <laughs> uh, but my first thought when that was happening was I gr grabbed onto the attacker's wrist. I only needed a couple of moments because I have a really oh. tough running mate, our next Lieutenant Governor, Alison Esposito, and six, seven, eight other people 
uh, also jumped in and quickly tackled this person. I I'm very grateful for all of those uh, attendees at the rally who got involved instinctively. I'm grateful to the law enforcement and Monroe County Sheriff's Office for their quick response. But I'm outraged the fact that once again, New York State's cashless bail law strikes again. And I predicted once this happened, didn't know exactly what he was going to get charged with. But I thought, this guy might be back on the street within hours. We just had a press conference a couple weeks ago in front of Alvin Bragg's office in Manhattan. And we were talking about two Mexican cartel drug smugglers who were busted with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth. They were instantly released back out on the streets. One of the arguments that gets made by advocates of cashless bail is that you should not keep somebody behind bars solely because they can't afford to post bail, that they otherwise should absolutely be released some lower level offense. They're not a flight risk. They don't have a past criminal record. They're not a danger. This perfect example used by the advocate, I don't think applies here in this case when you're talking about two Mexican cartel drug smugglers with 1.2 million of, of crystal meth. If you can't afford to post bail, you're a bad criminal, you're a bad drug smuggler, you are a bad business person, these two individuals should have been held as well. Uh, there should not be cashless bail posted on them. And we've seen these stories time and again, and they're all across the state. We just came from Syracuse, where a 93-year-old Connie Torrey was murdered by somebody released on cashless bail. Kathy Hochul will not endorse a, a major overhaul of cashless bail. She's, she's not talking about it. She wants to avoid the topic. And she says when confronted by media that the data doesn't support a change to cashless bail. I would offer that if she counts up the press clippings of all of the people who have been released on cashless bail and went out and committed additional offenses, that's your data. Count up the press clippings. Just count up the, the amount of times the you know, New York Post has written stories that talk about people released on cashless bail and they go out and commit additional offenses. So uh, I believe that Kathy Hochul is out of touch on the need to overhaul cashless bail where she says, no, she needs more data. She's out of touch as it relates to Alvin Bragg, where she says, cut him some slack. He just got there. He's doing his job. She's out of touch when she was asked about Bragg in the Jose Alba case, where she said, she wasn't going to get involved. This was a, a local matter. Jose Alba ended up having the murder charge against him released, dropped, because of public pressure. What if we took the advice of Kathy Hochul and none of us got involved in the case? Just, just let them deal with it. Well, he'd still be facing a murder charge. And by the way, if there wasn't video evidence, he might still be in Rikers Island. He might be there for many years. And what's interesting is as I travel around this state, how many people in Jefferson County, yes, they care about the closure of Ogdensburg. They care about new overtime rules for farming, which should be stopped. They care about the implementation of the HALT Act, harming correctional officers who live up here in the North Country. They care about tourism and the border. They care about dairy. But they're also talking about what they see coming out of their state what they see coming out of Albany, what they see coming out of our nation's capital. So it's important for us to focus on these issues because even if the Connie Torrey case might be in Syracuse, it might be a victim up further into the North Country in Jefferson County or St. Lawrence or Lewis or Franklin next. Uh, we are all in this together as New Yorkers, lastly, is that we have to restore balance to Albany, not just political balance, geographic balance.